Okay, now, Dr. Upman mentioned that uh, he wasn't sure about why there would be silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Some conjecture is that because this is after the sixth seal, this is referring to Armageddon, where the saints are coming down, which is why there is silence in heaven for about 30 minutes. But to be honest, I agree with Dr. Upman. That's a pretty loose interpretation. It's too much because if you read from verses 2 through 13 and then chapter 9 and chapter 10, uh, there's a five-month-long period, actually, within these trumpets sounding out of the seventh seal. So unless we're going like very, very slow-mo, you know, when we're coming down in Armageddon, it doesn't make sense. There's definitely no doubt it's an account summary. Now, this is my opinion, okay? I'm not saying it's doctrine. This is my opinion. Why there was silence in heaven about this space of 30 minutes. It's because it, it, it already is self-explanatory from verse 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. The reason why there was silence is because God is doing a ceremonial procession where the angels are preparing something and all of heaven is quiet. We all got to observe this. This would make a lot more sense with when you look at today's ceremonies. Isn't it natural when we have ceremonies, whether it be secular or religious, there's always quietness in the room? to observe the procession going on. And there is a procession going on. There's going to be altar, incense, and everything going on right here. So that's my guess. So that's my opinion. <clears throat> so these seven angels stood before God, right, before the throne. Now remember, I'm doing literally verse by verse, word for word, right? I'm doing this deliberately for a reason. That way all of you can understand each and every word out of that verse that we're that i'm trying to explain Amen. so that way you can improve your bible reading a lot of you didn't have difficulty understanding bible reading but this is your great opportunity to pay attention that way you can get it okay seven angels with seven trumpets okay so then uh well i don't well, let's just do this okay Amen. i wasn't going to do that out of their mouth because then it'll look like they're smoking cigarettes you know so <laughs> <laughs> okay so the seven angels have seven trumpets and they're standing before God. See, there's no doubt a royal ceremonial procession going on. Going. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Ah, remember up in heaven? Remember, it's patterned the things on earth. The Jewish things on earth is patterned after the things in heaven. There's an altar over here too, not just down on the earth. There's an altar over here. And then another angel comes out, and he goes before the altar over here, and then what does he do before this altar? Let's keep reading. Having a golden censer. See, he has a golden censer. You see what the Catholic Church tries to imitate and copycat? Yeah. Satan wants his own ceremony, his own church. Yeah. Having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense. See, he has an incense. that He should offer it with the prayers of all saints. That would be a great Catholic verse passage. See? Yeah. They're trying to offer up the prayers, you know, praying to saints, etc. But this one is a totally different case right here. So the angel has a golden censer and incense. And then what goes on is as he's swinging around this incense, it's going before the altar right here. It's the prayers what? That he should offer it with the prayers of what? All saints. Remember the saints down here? Tribulation saints. <coughs> Their prayers, right? Yeah. Did you remember Revelation chapter 5 and chapter 6, what I explained to you? The prayers of saints were? It was referring at Revelation 6, the tribulation saints being persecuted by the Antichrist and praying for the Lord for vengeance. Mm -hmm. So all that vengeance was being saved up over here. So that's why this thing contained the prayers of all the saints. But what did God say? Wait. So these prayers were storing up bigger and bigger and bigger. My goodness, that's why if uh, my, my good advice is this. If you're going to go against God's people mm -hmm. and they're praying to the Lord, crying before him day and night, you know what God's doing? He's not just judging the enemy immediately. He's saving it up. Wow. And when he stores it up and then slams it all down on you, that ain't pretty. That's scary. And then you've seen that with our ministry where these enemies try to attack our work 
and how God, he just went bam, 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 no mercy. And some of these guys at Arizona still don't learn their lesson. So then less than a season ago, they try to post a video about me being crazy and weird as if I'm not already crazy and weird, right? So what more can you do? And then I was like, well, God's going to get him. And guess what? Then they lost two more pastors as a result. Probably three now. Don't mess with God. Less than a season. Less than a season. Don't mess with God. The other guy struck with some kind of deadly illness. I don't know if it's cancer or something. Became even more invigorated to keep deliberately attacking the subject that this church is teaching on dispensationalism. Deliberately. God's going to get you. Watch out. All right, so then God's storing up all the prayers of the saints, and when his wrath comes down, look at this. This ain't no walk in the park. This ain't like how you spank your children, trust me, okay? All right, so they have it dumped upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Verse 4, and the smoke of the incense, see, because they, the smoke, smoke comes out of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints. It contains the prayers of the saints within that incense. Ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. Here's something you got to realize. When he's dumping all that prayers, that's going before God. Directly to God. What do you think God's going to do then? And that can still happen today because look at Acts chapter 10. And this guy is not even a Christian. He's an unsaved person. Look at this, Acts chapter 10. Look at Acts chapter 10. He's an unsaved person, yeah. and look, it comes up as a memorial before God, an incense coming up before God. Remember, G Jesus Christ is our high priest. Remember that? Yes, sir. Yeah. At Romans chapter 8, if you read that, Jesus Christ is our high priest interceding the prayers of the saints. Mm -hmm. Now, with a Christian, you got Jesus Christ interceding in the tribulation. You got the angel doing the incense. So don't you think at the church age, Jesus Christ is going to take care of the prayers of his children better than an angel could at the tribulation? Mm -hmm. Don't mess with God's people. Amen. You do that, God's going to get you. Yeah. Good warning, man. Acts chapter 10. Look at verse 2. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. But he was not saved yet, because if you read down at verses 32 all the way to the end of the chapter, that's when he got saved by Peter. So he wasn't saved yet. Now look at verse 3. He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Look at this, an unsaved man, thy prayers and thine alms, are come up for a what? Memorial before God. Look at that. So that still goes on today. All right, let's go to Revelation. The worst thing you can ever happen in your life is that when God hears the cries of his children and that prayer stores up. Yeah. Well, God didn't strike me dead yet. I, I'm okay. I'm going to keep persecuting his people. Don't. Oh, wow. Trust me, do not do that. That's even more scary. I'd rather have God spanking you every time you touch God's person because if he stores it up and then goes bam on you, trust me, it's bam. Amen. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 8. Verse 5. Okay, now look how pretty this is. Look how gentle and meek our Lord is at verse 5 with all these prayers. And the angel took the censer, right? He took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar, so that fire from the altar comes up before it, and cast it into the earth. So he's casting all that fire. Why is that? Because it contained all the prayers, and that prayer is burning sky high. And that fire, he, the angel swishes it around and casts that fire down on the earth right here. Wrath of God. No wonder tribulation is known as God's wrath, right? Amen. Wrath is known as fire. Okay. Filled it with fire of the altar, cast into the earth, and there were what? Voices. There, voices came out of the altar. Thunderings, a lot of thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. So basically cataclysmic chaos with all the prayers, and then wham! Yeah. 
like that. Verse 6, and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets, so these seven angels obviously have seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. They're about to blow it. Let's look at the first one. Here we go. The first angel sounded, okay, when he sounded, what came out? And there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. That looks pretty, right? And they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burned up. So then one third of Mother Nature goes down. So there goes Mother Nature. And all green grass was burnt up. There goes all the pres preservation of wildlife and nature with, with all the Berkeley student hippies and camp campuses and students screaming on top of their lungs, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> now, what's, uh, Dr. Rutman mentioned something pretty funny is that when preachers were talking about the end of the world, uh -huh. scientists laughed at the preachers. Yeah. But now that the scientists are saying this is the end of the world, the preachers laugh at the scientists. Yeah, yeah. Very true, isn't it? Yeah. Very true. Global warming, global warming. We're all going to die. <laughs> Trump became president. This is the end. Let's all go to Canada, you know, stuff like that. You know, these silly little people, and then what do the Bible believers do? We just laugh. Amen. We just laugh. And then when we preach about judgment is coming, Jesus is coming, these guys laugh at you at street preaching. Yeah. See, what, what's going on? Fair is fair. Every time this guy laughs at us, you know, we know that we're going to laugh at them back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, so notice right here there's hail. So the first, let's go through the seven trumpets, shall we? Here we go. So now we're at the seventh seal. This seventh seal contains seven trumpets. See that? And then you're going to notice right here it does sound like an overview because the seventh seal is going to contain seven trumpets and it looks like there's a huge amount of time that's going on. Okay, one thing we know is that the first trumpet that it was hail and fire probably from that altar, right? It could be. So it says came down into the earth. So that kind of matches with that fire from the altar cast into the earth at verse 5. So it may be when the angel just slams down the center, sensor that uh, when the fire comes out of the altar, hail comes out with it. But it says mingled with blood as well. Isn't that interesting? It's not just fire and hail, but blood as well. And you're going to see a lot of reference toward blood Blood, blood. Why is that, preacher? Did you forget Revelation chapter 6? Go back there. Revelation 6. God didn't forget. Amen. Verse 10. That's why I'd be sure your sin will find you out. You can't run away from God. Yes. He hears the prayers of the saints. What did the tribulation saints cry out at verse 10? And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and what? avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. That's why he deliberately sent down blood. You know what? You remember the blood that you shed? I'm going to pour down blood on you. Wow. Don't mess with God. And then you see a third of the nature and trees and wildlife burnt up. So that's the reason why that we're not afraid of global warming. You might say, why is that? You're going to still have a lot of land left over at verse 7. Now, obviously, we don't believe, look, if you litter on the streets, sorry, you're not right with God, all right? Don't do that, please, all right? I hate stepping on somebody's chewing gum, all right? That happened before. My brother was not right with God, and then he just <laughs> spat out his gum on the pavement. I told him, don't do that. What if somebody steps on it? Literally, two minutes later, I stepped on his chewing gum. <laughs> Amen. See, you know, you're not right with God, you know? Repent, you know? No, <laughs> just kidding. But the po point is... But the point is, is that, <laughs> the point is, is that uh, we don't believe in like burning up the trees and, you know, throwing garbage outside. But here's something that you got to understand. Neither are we worried and concerned about that we have to, literally, the government is spending like hundreds of thousands to millions to billions of dollars and the celebrities spending their money on what? On, on these trees because global warming is real, supposedly. Okay. <laughs> 